Today on Running to Him. A person who lives in the flesh results in death. Living in the spirit results in life. Now, if you're joining us in going through the Pauline letters, today's reading is Romans chapter 8, verses 1 through 25, and we'll concentrate on verses 10 through 13. Romans 8, 10 through 13 says this, If Christ is in you, though the body is dead because of sin, yet the spirit is alive because of righteousness. But if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ Jesus from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. So then, brethren, we are under obligation not to the flesh to live according to the flesh. For if you are living according to the flesh, you might die. But if by the spirit you are putting death to the deeds of the body, you will live. Well, verse 13 is the conclusion to a very straightforward argument. We have to choose between death or life. If we are living by the flesh, we are choosing death. If we are living by life or through the Spirit, we are having a relationship with God through Christ, then we are choosing life. The works of the flesh are plain, and they are outlined by Paul in Galatians 5, 19-21. Now, you might be thinking that the works listed there are not the works of the flesh that Paul is addressing in Romans. And while some of those works listed in Galatians would not be indicative of a person attempting to live a moral life, all of his or her works are damaged through that person's sin. An example or two of this truth is found in how we function in the church world. Now, if you give money to receive a tax-deductible receipt, then your good work is tainted by greed. You're saying this money is mine, and if I give some money to the church, I expect to receive something of value in return. A person who attends church because he or she is required to is exhibiting a manipulative plan. I'll attend church so God will see that I tried to live by his standard. Now, on the other hand, if you give and don't care if you receive a tax deduction or you go to church to worship God and to be with him, then your work will result in righteousness. Now, let me be clear here. You do not become righteous because of your work. You become righteous because of your faith in Christ you are working out that righteousness by participating in God's nature through your submission to the Holy Spirit, 2 Peter 1, verses 4 and 5. Our walk in Christ is progressive. We start our journey when we trust in his sacrifice. We are to continue that walk, gradually changing the way and how much we submit to God. This participation in God's nature will allow us, over time, to look more like Christ. We will never attain that vision while we are here on the earth, but everything we experience is in our preparation for our eternity with God. Thank you for listening. We pray that today's devotion was meaningful to you. We would love to hear from you. If you listen to us on Facebook or YouTube, please like, subscribe, share, and tell others about us. You can always email us at phineasjacobus at runningtohim.net.